love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to Oshanka Show. Uh, today I would like to touch the topic about religion in Soviet Union. Um, as I mentioned many times before, I was born in 1971, so it was towards the end of life of the Soviet Union. And in the 20 years that I spent in the USSR, I was a classic example of uh, how the people in the late Soviet Union were uh, relating to religion. For example, uh, my parents weren't religious. Like, we never attended church. Um, we didn't have uh, icons in our house or Bible. Uh, I was, you know, everything that a Soviet kid is supposed to be, a member of a young communist and Aktebrionak and everything else. But at the same time, my parents uh, baptized me when I was born. So I had a godfather and godmother but besides uh, being baptized, uh, nothing else happened. And as I said, my parents weren't religious, although my mom, as uh, older she gets, and she kind of uh, became interested somewhat in religion. At least she mentions uh, God and Jesus way more often than I remember. But otherwise, me and most of my friends, I don't remember anyone who was an uh, openly religious person practicing any kind of religion, of course, uh, in European part of Soviet Union, uh, main official religion was, I won't say official, because church and the state was separated, but it was a Russian Orthodox uh, church and dominating uh, Ukraine and uh, Belarus and Russia. But as I said, uh, I never wore a cross. A lot of uh, 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 people that, uh, true believers, is one of the things they're supposed to do it to wear on their neck, um, a cross. You know, if you have money, wear a golden cross. Otherwise, it can be a silver cross or made out of cheap metal. And generally, government was uh, quite tolerant towards the religion in late 70s and 80s, but of course, it wasn't uh, uh, happening like that in the beginning. Uh, right after the revolution in October of 1917, uh, as once again, as I was mentioning that before, I think the Soviet leaders were way over optimistic about uh, fighting against religion in the country. I guess the, the idea was that uh, people are ready to ditch the religion. All you need to do is just rip that uh, eye patch of their, uh, uh, from their faces and they will see what's going on. Um, so there was a quite intense uh, destruction of churches all over the country. Uh, just in Moscow, uh, after 1917, uh, so in 1920s and 30s, before uh, beginning of World War II, just in Moscow itself, around 400 churches were uh, destroyed or converted or some other type of uh, usage. In Kiev, in my hometown, a total of 12 churches were uh, blown up in 1930s. Um, in my village that I mention all the time, in the northern Ukraine, uh, the church uh, was converted into the so-called club. Uh, so those like people would come in and watch movies or uh, do some kind of gatherings. So it was uh, taken away from the church. They uh, pulled the cross off the roof I remember my grandma was uh, even, you know, it's late 70s, she still remembered how horrified the whole uh, village was, how peasants were upset watching uh, these strangers that came uh, from out of our town, from somewhere else, uh, like Soviet soldiers, and they just uh, tied up the rope to the cross on the top of the church, and then using horses, they pull it off. And I think she said some local guy was helping and then uh, later on he died in some weird um, farming accident and they were saying that he got cursed because he helped to destroy the church. 
in my father's village, I believe they tr uh, they converted the church into a warehouse for the collective farms to store grains and stuff. Uh, so there was a quite uh, almost like a terror going against the religion in the Soviet Union in the early years. Um, there were exploding churches. Um, they were taking bells and crosses and melting to metal to use for other purposes. And uh, Comrade Lenin, um, that's uh, what he said was, we must fight religion. Uh, it's the basic of materialism and consequentially Marxism. So religion is our enemy. So they went uh, really hard after church after October 1917. For example, in the famous Decreta Zimulia, so decree of the about the land, they confiscated uh, all the church properties and land and transferred it to the government. And then also they uh, next law in 1918, they uh, made separation between church and the state because prior uh, during the Tsar government. Tsar ruling church was a state institution that was a part of the government. And you know, uh, regular peasants, what I recall from the stories of, uh, from my grandma and my grandfather, um, they were kind of uh, skeptical, they were religious, uh, peasants were religious people, but they were also quite skeptical about uh, priests. So there were a lot of humor and jokes, uh, anecdotes going on about priests, you know, messing around uh, with other women. Uh, being lazy and uh, I remember the one story was quite interesting uh, prior uh, people couldn't give their kids names like you can't choose the name it was a job of the local priest uh, Pope as they call it in uh, Russia so what uh, when you had a kid and then you bring him to uh, church to get him baptized and the priest would be the guy who would pick the name for a kid. And it would depend on donations. So, you know, peasants, I don't know if they could bring money, but they will bring, you know, chickens, honey, whatever they have, grains. And depending if they bring quite a generous gift, then a priest will give a kid a good name. But otherwise, if people are poor, then he can pick some, I guess even back then there were some ugly names that no one wanted to have. And I remember my grandma uh, was telling me the story that they had a, a guy in their village that priest wasn't happy with the nation. So he gave him a name Homa, which was horrible name. And he always hated it. Uh, kids were making fun of him. And uh, she said that when the war started with Germany, uh, he of course got drafted as everyone else, you know, all the males, and he just went uh, right into the bullets, like he wanted just to get killed, like they always thought he wanted to commit suicide because she just hated his name so much, and he got instantly killed, so that was a kind of sad story, so... Uh, People wasn't, weren't big fans of religion, but at the same time, what the Soviets did was also, they were really upset about it, uh, how they uh, took away their churches, and then a lot of uh, priests uh, were sent to Siberia or just shot. So that was a pretty cruel uh, start of the uh, war against religion in Soviet Union. And of course, if you part of the, um, some kind of management in 30s and 40s under Stalin regime, uh, you could get quite in trouble if they find out that the uh, party member uh, also is a religious person. And I remember one story, I don't recall, not sure, I think it's, it's a not a made up story, uh, but uh, it goes that a guy who was a председатель колхоза, so he was a manager of the collective farm, but he was secretly a religious person. So every morning when he gets ready to go to work, right before he steps out of the door, he'll cross himself. That's what the Russian Orthodox people do. You know, you touch your forehead, then you touch your kind of like abdomen area, then you touch your left shoulder and right shoulder. So you kind of like cross yourself. And a neighbor noticed that, I guess through the window, or maybe he did outside, and he reported to NKVD, so they're like a, a secret police, that uh, our 
manager is actually a secretly religious person he crosses himself and the story goes that he got arrested and they were questioning him like uh, why are you crossing yourself and the story goes that the guy said well it's totally ridiculous i don't cross myself because i'm a communist uh, before i go uh, step out of the door i touch my head to think uh, do, did i do everything uh, do i ready for my uh, work day then i touch my stomach uh, to make sure that i ate my breakfast uh, then i touch my left uh, shoulder uh, to feel that i have my uh, billet uh, so the book that i'm you know communist party book that you keep your at the left shoulder and there was other something that I kept in my other pocket so he kind of made this story that he's actually checking himself that he's ready to do his duty as a manager of collective farm and they let him go but I'm not sure is it real or not but it sounds pretty funny so uh, people who were in government of course they couldn't be uh, religious people and um, practice religion in the Soviet Union Things changed quite a bit uh, when the war started with Germany in 1941 and the Soviet Union was uh, not doing really good. As you know, 1941 and most of 1942 was pretty bad for the Soviet Union. Uh, Germans were moving in and they occupied quite a lot bit of the country. So Stalin and uh, his government did a, a real 180 about this whole attitude to the history of Russia and also about religion and they realized that uh, a lot of people didn't really care about fighting for the soviet uh, government soviet regime but they would fight germans uh, for you know motherland for russia or for ukraine or even the uh, fight against you know people who have opposite religion so a lot of things were changed like they started mentioning you know that we're fighting for motherland uh, and they introduced even awards like Suvorov's uh, Orden so there was a new medal with the Suvorov who was a, a famous military leader during the Tsar era way back then uh, so the government started kind of using uh, history that before they were kind of ignoring of history of Russia and also they uh, started using church and they actually uh, gathered a bunch of uh, uh, church members like the church management I want to say uh, priests uh, for making the agreement to work together with the church uh, about uh, you know kind of getting people going uh, and fighting Germans so war kind of changed the attitude of the Soviet government towards religion instead of fighting it they realized that uh, it will work better if they kind of utilize religion along with uh, other things to actually help to organize people and rule people.